Greetings, everyone. The entire main art sector is hurting right now. Please know that we are committed to providing whatever we can to help. We are and have been open since the beginning of this crisis, so please reach out by phone or email and we'll try to assist in any way we can. At the end of this webinar, we'll post everyone's email address and phone number again so that you can have those in one place. I've been in regular conversations with state and federal officials about the availability of relief funds and programs for the creative sector. More on that in a few minutes. We're also trying to do whatever we can now to assist you as quickly as possible. Let's start with our resources. The Main Arts Resources page contains several pieces of information that you're going to find extremely relevant right now, including links to many national resources, as well as local resources, information on relief for artists and arts organizations, and more information about the emergency relief package. One of the ones that I want to point out right now is a artist relief fund that we just created, the main artist relief fund, and it's through Arts Engage Me. We have money available, $500 grants, and these are quick turnaround grants that you can access. We plan on having that link and application available on April 1st, so please check back. It might be uh, available sooner, um, but these are quick grants that you can access uh, very, very easily. So I would encourage anyone who is hurting right now to absolutely check that out next week. In the meantime, there are several relief funds for artists in particular linked on that page. There are many, many listed through this page, which is constantly being updated, so please check back on a regular basis. We also have two surveys available, one for organizations and one for individual artists, and they both measure the economic impact that the Corona-19 virus is having on the arts and culture sector. And the data is incredibly valuable to report. If you've not taken these surveys yet, please do so at the Arts Resources page at MainArts.com. So to date, 105 main organizations have responded to the Americans for the Arts survey reporting $418,140 in total financial impact. 408 artists have responded to our survey. 41% of them make less than $10,000 from their art. 65% are reporting a decrease in income due to COVID-19. And 76% have canceled or postponed exhibits, events, or performances. We've also collected much anecdotal information about how this is directly impacting artists and the situation is extreme. This data is shared weekly with our state economist and on a rolling basis with federal officials. And now, Kirsten Gilg, our grants director, will talk about available grants. The Maine Arts Commission grants are moving forward. We have extended the spring deadline, so the arts organization grants are now due April 2nd, and the artist grants are due April 9th. We anticipate that applicants' projects involving the public may not be happening with as much confidence this cycle. We anticipate that fewer organizations may be in a position to apply for the project grant. Therefore, as an option, we encourage organizations to consider the organization development grant. These funds are designed to support organizations in capacity building projects and have traditionally gone towards things like marketing, fiscal planning, board development, things like that. However, the grant is broad based and it can also be used to assist organizations in developing a project or strategy for navigating the economic downturn caused by the COVID-19 emergency. It's something to consider. Organization development grants that are focused on COVID-19 projects will be fast tracked. Instead of having a July notice date, we will be speeding up the process so applications will be sent notices by mid-May. This would enable funds to be used by July 1st as opposed to September when a majority of, of our other grant funding is generally allocated. The Artist Project Grant has traditionally gone to support creative projects, but it can also be used for capacity building projects by artists. Funds could be used for website development, researching software for teaching classes online, taking online courses, producing marketing and promotional materials, and more. There is a complete list of suggestions on our website. Changing grant application information may be more necessary than ever this cycle. You can always go back into your application while you're applying as long as the final submit button hasn't been hit. If you do hit the final submit button and decide you need to make changes prior to the deadline, please give me a call and I will unlock your application so those modifications can be included. 
If you have received a grant award this past year and are unable to undertake it due to the circumstances, please contact me and we can discuss your options. If you can't complete the project that you proposed with minor changes, you may do this as long as the minor changes still fit within the intent of the funding with the original project. You can make minor changes without needing approval. You just need to identify the changes in the final report after the project has been concluded. If you can only complete the project by making significant changes, you can request approval for the changes you wish to make by calling or emailing me. A significant change would include something like replacing an artist who is no longer available, changing a venue, date changes, or changes to your budget or personnel that create a change in character to the project. If you have any questions about grants changes, please contact me and we can discuss. We are here to support you. And now back to Julie Richard to talk about the emergency relief bill recently passed by Congress. Thanks, Kirsten. There's so much in this bill that I am going to just hit the highlights and will distribute other information as needed and as more detail becomes available. So first, I want to talk about the fact that the NEA, the National Endowment for the Arts, will be receiving $75 million in this package. 40% of this will come directly to state arts agencies. That's us. We do not yet know how much we will be receiving or what kind of restrictions, if any, will be on this money. So you need to be patient while all of this unfolds. We are hoping that we'll know more about this within the next three to four weeks. Second, unemployment insurance changes. This is critical for both artists and nonprofit arts organizations. This bill allows for self-employed, part-time, and gig economy workers to apply, which is brand new. In addition, there will be a $600 increase for every American applying, elimination of waiting weeks to access these funds, and a 13-week extension of those benefits. The bottom line, if you are an artist who has lost income due to lost gigs, you work for a nonprofit that doesn't have unemployment insurance or other previously ineligible situation, all that has changed you are now eligible and should apply for these benefits. Third, the Small Business Administration Disaster Relief Loans. This also applies now to artists and to nonprofits, so please pay attention. You might say, I don't need a loan that I can't pay back. Well, $350 billion of this money is dedicated to forgiving these loans in their entirety. Those who are self-employed, Yes, you artists and musicians and nonprofits can apply for these. The easiest and best way to do this currently is to go through your lender. Otherwise, you will have to go through the SBA. While I've heard some horror stories, the system crashing, getting bumped off just as you're finishing the application, etc., please persevere. This is significant money and will be the best way to sustain yourself and your organization through this crisis. We are working with our partners nationally to get sector-specific technical assistance out to you about this program, so stay tuned and keep checking back. And in the meantime, we have re recently received really important information about this that sort of uh, encapsulates this in a nutshell that is on our, available on our website now. And finally, in this package, there will be also rebate checks going out within the next few weeks. $1,200 checks going out to any individual making up to $75,000, $2,400 checks going out to those married filing jointly up to $150,000, and for those with children, $500 per child. This will be based on your 2019 or 2018 tax return, whichever they have on file. Word is that this is just the first emergency relief bill. They are not calling this a stimulus, so there should be more to come as the weeks pass. Finally, we are offering, offering a crisis engagement webinar for organizations next Friday, April 3rd at 10.30 a.m., given by Matt Lehrman of Social Prosperity. The theme of this webinar is 12 tasks to, to, to sustain donors in turbulent times. Matt has presented at two previous MICA conferences to rave reviews. He's offering this webinar to us free of charge. 
You do still need to register, however, in order to get the link to the webinar. We are limited to 100 participants, so please sign up soon. In the meantime, please reach out to us if you have any questions about anything. Fill out those surveys and keep going back to do it again if your situation has significantly changed since you filled it out the first time and have more to report. Stay tuned for more information about NEA funding and please, above all, stay safe.